probably imagine that a lot of you perhaps have taken notes from other parishes. And you know, what I always strongly encourage is that when you do come together, you know, whether it be just within the parish or even as a deanery, is maybe just discuss things like that that could help others. Because certainly I know that every training session that I have done and that we have done over the past is that you know somebody always will get a great idea or a, an improvement in, as to where they want to be at from listening and what other parishes are actually doing. So you know try to break down those silos and you know communicate with each other even if it means you know a safety person maybe communicates with another parish safety person or even an administration person you know communicates with another administration person just to get some ideas and advice particularly if you're new in the in the role of administration within the Anglican Church you know I'm sure somebody like uh, Di from Harvey Bay would be more than happy to talk to Yvonne from you know uh, Maryborough uh, and those sort of things so get to know each other <laughs> yeah. so good okay so um, look that was really well done um, we're going to do a few more activities as we're going along but has anyone got any points they like to raise about any of those uh, that little bit of an activity that you just did no? good we'll keep going okay so safety duties what does safety look like in our parish so I'm holding up a flowchart here Someone said, what does the legislation, what's the legislation all about? I'll go through the legislation and I'll explain what we mean by the Work Health and Safety Act, the Work Health and Safety Legislation, Codes of Practice. I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on that, but enough to give you a base understanding of it and why we're actually doing what we're doing today. So, in 2011, a new Work Health and Safety Act, being the Act of Parliament, was passed through pretty much all jurisdictions, which is all states and territories, apart from a couple, and they all signed off on the new legislation, which is the Work Health and Safety Act, which then has accompanying regulations. Now, the importance of that new piece of legislation meant that it encaptured the not-for-profit organisations in safety obligations. That's the legal framework that was introduced. So under the under the duty as duty as duty holders, everybody in this room and everybody in the kitchen there and everybody who volunteers to do activities for the parish is classed as a worker under the legislation. Even though you're a volunteer, the legislation um, mandates that the employer, which is a new term now which I'll go through in a moment, the employer must have reasonable care or, or do what is reasonably practicable to keep the workers safe. Now the employer is a new term which is called a person conducting business or undertaking. If you look on the flip side of your sheet that you're holding, you'll see there's some terminologies there that you can get used to, so it's called a PCBU. Okay, so the PCBU, if you think about it, how you want to think about it, it's probably the employer. So the corporation of, of the Senate of the Diocese of Brisbane is the PCBU. Okay, so that is how basically the employer. Okay. Yeah. So basically it's a person who's conducting business for a, a business or doing some sort of undertaking. Any activities or undertaking that you're doing for the actual um, uh, business. For example, you're the person in charge organising church faith. No, so the, so the, the corporation itself corporation. is the employer, which is the PCBU. So think of it as an entity not as a person. So that is how you need to think of it in, in a hierarchy type of way. Okay, so basically it's the entity. All right, down from that, and you can see on that flow chart, the, the entity, which is the corporation, has a duty of care 
to ensure that people are safe, and that is that's the primary duty of care, that their workers and officers remain safe within the business of doing the activities for the corporation. Now, directly underneath that, you have another duty holder which is known as an officer. Now, the primary duty of an officer is to exercise due diligence. Who do you think the officer would be of the corporation of the Synod of the Diocese of Brisbane? Who would be the, the officers? Archbishop? Is that what you said? Archbishop? Regional bishops? DC? Dyson Council? General Manager? And those the heads of those different commissions? So they are the officers. Now, they have a due diligence. So what does due diligence mean? Basically, it means, if you can see there are a couple of little examples there, provide and implement procedures, policies, provide and implement safe uh, uh, tools and training, um, provide resources to keep um, the workers safe. So I'm a resource now. I'm a resource that they've employed to, to do the training. They're providing a safety management system. They're providing you with tools. You know, so they have to ensure that they that the officers do every the, the officers have to do everything they can to ensure that the PCBU, which is the corporation, the entity, keeps us all safe, including themselves. Okay? So down from that is the next term which is called a worker. So a worker includes a contractor, a volunteer, um, a paid worker, um, so clergy, um, you know, volunteers, administration staff, wardens, PCs, they're all, so any activities that you do, including this is an activity you're doing today, you're doing work for, the PCBU. Okay. Does that make sense so far? So, because you're, even though you're a volunteer, you're, you're, you're safeguarded by the legislation now. Whereas prior to that, employees could remove a lot of their obligations to safeguard volunteers. That's why there was a big change with the legislation. Okay. So. You know, underneath that, there's a couple of things that, you know, both the priest in charge and the volunteers are still classed um, under the definition as, a, as workers. Even though the, the priest in charge or the parish council might have um, ability to significantly change the financial status within your parish or significantly affect what goes with, on within the parish, you still come under the PCBU, which is the corporation. So with the officers, they have a, uh, an ability to significantly change and, and or affect the financial holdings or the uh, business going on within the corporation. And that's why they're classed as an officer. And it's the same, it's the same terminology that you'll find in the Corporations Act. So all you really got to worry about in relation to the legislation is know, okay, who are the officers? Now, there's prosecutions that can occur for um, officers that don't actually fulfil due diligence, and that's why there's always a push down from the diocese, and you're always wondering, well, why is this coming down? In a way, it's safeguarding the corporation, safeguarding their duty as an officer holder and also implementing procedures and policies, providing a safe environment for everybody in the room and all the activities that you uh, conduct as a parish. Now, with that, you've got a duty, which is take reasonable care in what you do. So reasonable care includes act in a safe manner, you know, don't do anything that's going to affect um, the safety of another person, you know, uh, think before you act. You know, if that if that um, conduit person, if that had been what we call a uh, notifiable incident where the person screwed through the um, conduit, that could have come almost down to um, what they call as reckless behaviour. 
um, under the Act um, because he was inducted, um, you know, he'd gone through processes of all that. So it comes down, it comes down to the individual as well, and that's why when people say, oh, "I've got a safety officer to do that," that's good, but it's still everybody's responsibility in, in, the, in the parish to be safe, okay, and to take reasonable care of themselves, just like you would do when you're at home. You know, not going up the ladder in your thongs and <laughs> not going up there with a butt, so to speak. Now, the other part is parishioners. Parishioners coming onto the parish grounds, they're not classed as workers, but they're known as others. Now, others still have to take reasonable care. Now, if you remember when we were going around and I was doing the support visits, I, I, I said to you, how do you communicate safety to them, to the parishioners or the congregation as a whole? You know, you put up notices on the notice boards about safety, emergency response. You might raise it in a service on a quarterly or a monthly basis every now and then, depending on how much your congregation changes. Or you might put it into your pew notices, you know, of a, um, you know, of a monthly or a quarterly basis. Or if they do at the Bush Ministry, they're always talking to their congregation after the service, and I'm sure all that involves safety. So you've got to provide a little bit of communication to your parishioners as well to take reasonable care, one, to keep themselves safe, but two, if something does happen, then you know, they have been, they've been communicated safety in a way that is going to you know, safeguard the parish as a whole and the diocese as a whole. I.e., there was another incident uh, in one of the parishes where a parishioner was leaving the site and they were told to um, uh, use the handrails or use the ramp when they were leaving the centre and there was five stairs and you know it was clearly heard by other um, parishioners that no I'm not going to use a handrail I don't need to. She fell and she fell five flights of stairs and hit her head on the concrete on the bottom and consequently she passed away in hospital passed away in hospital the next morning. Okay, now it's the police and everyone gets involved with that and those types of things. But you know, it's a tragic thing for that to happen. She was an elderly uh, lady and um, you know, unfortunately she passed away. So, you know, you, you want to try to keep them safe as best as you can. Yes, people are going to think they're 30 when their bodies are 80 as somebody said, um, or 70 or 60 or 50. But you know, we've got to think to act safe at, at all times, okay? Risk-based legislation.